Hello and welcome to the Conscious Communion Podcast, where we traverse through the inner dwellings of the human experience through conversation. I'm your host, Danae. Join me as we explore the interconnection of creativity and community. Melissa Aparicio is a Chicana desert devotee, nurturing the basic roots of existence to live as a student of life and the human experience. She's a breath and body facilitator, also expressing her craft as a mentor to women. I found Melissa's work a few years ago and was instantly drawn to her vibrant essence. She's a beautiful writer, creative, and friend to the land. I am super honored to have her here with me today. Here is Melissa Aparicio. Hi, Danae. It's good to finally connect with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Your Thank work you is me. truly one of a kind because you are one of a kind, obviously. All of our all of our work and our essence is so unique to us, but your magic speaks volumes to me and it's quite possibly connected to the culture. I've, I'm very disconnected from my culture because of the indoctrination and the assimilation that takes place oftentimes when, when we move to the States and my family goes generations back to living in California. But you revitalize something in me, seeing you wear your mm -hmm. culture so beautifully. And I just want to thank you for, for that. Yeah, that's something I've actively had to work on myself, too. It is very easy to become estranged to our roots and who we are. And that can change in like a second. It's mm -hmm. like your choice. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you get to own it, you get to embody it, and you get to bring it back life. Like if your parents let it go in some capacity or your grandparents or the multiple generations before you, that's on them. You know, like it's you and you and you and you get to bring back your culture and your identity and you get to um, collaborate with the land to help you remember, you know. Mm, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for that encouragement. I... You bringing up the land, I know that you are a desert dweller and you are a steward to the earth. So I'd love for you to just share a little bit about that experience because I'm sure it shapes you greatly. I know it does in your work and the earth is the best medicine in my opinion. So yeah, I would be it would be a joy to talk about the land and the earth and where I come from. Um, I live in the Sonoran Desert. I was born and raised here, um, so I'm like a border baby. Um, but it wasn't always like that, you know, like I wasn't always connected to the earth or the landscape that raised me. Um, I grew up in the hood, you know, like I was a, a, I was a hood rat and it was very like inner city energy, very concrete. Um, we never went camping, you know, as a kid or anything like that. Like I was so disconnected from my environment. Um, and it wasn't until I was a young woman on my own that I really started to gravitate more towards where I live and the desert that was around me. Um, so yeah, it's been a really slow burn. <laughs> it has taken some time and it took me to reach like very strong rock bottoms for me to like reach back to the earth for guidance, you know, like when you don't know who to speak to, when you don't have anyone to turn to, like the land is always there. And that's kind of what brought me onto that path. Um, man, there's so many layers to that journey for me. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. I don't even know where to begin on that. But mm. yeah, I think when I got really sick in my early 20s, it was a big wake up call for me. And part of my rehabilitation and coming back to, I don't even know what to call it, you know, myself was going to the desert every single day. And I don't know what was driving it. It was almost like bizarre. Like literally every single day I was getting my butt in my vehicle and just driving into whatever direction I could to just roam around and walk around. And it changed my life. Like it radically transformed who I was. And I was started like 
hearing stuff, you know, I didn't, there was like a language, there was like an ancient hidden language in just like being in proximity to the elders of this landscape. And I didn't know what it was, you know, like I didn't have any teachers in this regard. And so a lot of it was just like self-led and um, just being willing to listen. And I think that's what's really beautiful about being at like a rock bottom where you have nothing left to lose. And so you're just kind of like cracked open and just down to receive whatever it is like the natural world has for you in that given moment. And so, yeah, when I was a young woman in my early 20s, that's kind of what happened to me. And I started paying attention and I started, you know, collaborating with her in a much more significant way that has truly shaped me in ways beyond any modality or person or conversation, you know, like the conversations that are available to us out there um, are so intimate and so personal. And yeah, I just encourage everyone to find out what that looks like for them. And I think that also helps pacify the need to have to always be externally grasping for answers and solutions. And let me try this and let me see what they have to say. And, you know, it's a never ending search. And so part of my path of no longer searching and searching and searching was just sinking in and letting the earth kind of take you, (laughs) devour you, if you will. Yeah, I think, I think, it's funny around the same time when I was in my twenties, that's, that's when I too really just let myself be led by the earth and her magic. And it was this call. It was this instantaneous, never ending push and pull to come back and be with me, come back and be with me. And those are the lessons that have forever shaped me into who I am today. I, I, with above all else, that's, I know that that's my grounding force at the end of the day. If anything else, I can go sit and be with the earth and just feel safe. And yeah, you know? Yeah. I mean, we have to create safety for ourselves and Mm -hmm. that's definitely one thing that the landscape continues to teach me. Um, I feel you. (laughs) I feel you. Especially in the desert. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people see the desert as a very like hard and cruel kind of environment. And I mean, I think any environment can be that, you know, Mm -hmm. if that's what you're kind of looking for. Um, But the desert has like taken me places that I never thought I would be like, I, I don't know. Part of like, reviving your relationship to the land is like coming back to your intuition you know like I didn't know that I was training my intuition by just going to visit the land every day and communicating with the land like you're literally like returning to that innate intuitive muscle that just pulses with you at all times and I had no idea how disconnected and fragmented I was my entire life and not just me you know like everyone around me, my entire like family and those that I was raised around, like we were so like discombobulated. And I think that's just the nature of this systemic society, you know, that we're in. There's a lot of survival mode essence to it. And I think when you're just trying to survive, you know, and especially like being raised in the hood, like everyone's just trying to get by. Everyone's trying to survive. Everyone's just trying to pay their bills and like get to the next day. There is no sinking into that depth. There is no space for that. And I think that's one of like the biggest disservices that these paradigms have like, you know, impacted on people. So, yeah, I think that all being said, it's like creating circumstances and situations for yourself where you can start to really like exercise that intuition muscle is going to build a robust sense of self-trust and self-knowing um, that nothing else can provide. And so, yeah, hands down to the land for <laughs> putting me on that path. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Great mother. Like it's, it never ceases to amaze me the things we can learn when we just go and s- sit and one and wonder and <laughs> 
let the intuition come, let the, the words and the wisdom and the knowing r- bring us back to our own remembrance because we really can come back to this mm-hmm. childlike wonder. And you, yeah. I feel like it's really challenging to find that in anything else. I can, I can find it in other things, but not as quickly. When I go sit with the creek, it's like instantaneous. Yeah. And I think that's a really important aspect to it. Like we overcomplicate what the process is like in our heads. Like we think it's this big mystery, mysterious thing that we need to be like initiated to. And it's like, no, just like get your butt down there and go lay down. Like literally just go lay on the ground and observe and witness and watch and watch all of your psychosis and all of your chaos swirl around you. And you don't have to do anything, but just watch it. Um, Like, You don't need to sign up for a million trainings to know how to go lay on the ground. (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, And just by doing that, like I spend a lot of time just laying in arroyos out in the desert. You know, it's like nice soft sand and it's usually like 10 degrees cooler down in the arroyos and like the washes. And yeah, I just take myself on a nice little hike and, you know, I have my little spots that I like to frequent And you just lay and you just roll around and you cry sometimes or you laugh sometimes. And there's just like this lively energy that eventually just starts circulating around you. Um, And it is like bringing back like the inner child. You know, I do feel like a little kid again down there. Um, A lot of just like the exit, like the cloak of garbage kind of comes off and it's like, oh, okay, I could just feel like this and it doesn't have to be such a big deal. (laughs) Totally. Yeah. That's, you put that so beautifully. So thank you for that. Thank you for, (laughs) for sharing that medicine with us and, and the world, because you, I've seen this progression in your social media presence, but also having the process to get to the place that you're in today. I'm sure it's been a process. So I'd love for you to just share a little bit about that process and what that's looked like for you to really exercise that part of you to speak your truth and to be in this place that you are today where you are really standing in the essence of all that spirit is having you move forward and and, and utilize your voice for good. Yeah. Thank you for noticing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's just been a series of many deaths, <laughs> you know, and um, relinquishing of the false self and witnessing all of the programs and conditionings that I have just kind of cloaked onto myself. And it's kind of like the security blanket, like a shield that we wear, that we at some point in our development, we decided we needed these characteristics, these personality types, these traits, and they're going to protect us. You know, it's going to keep us safe. It's going to ensure that we get what we need and what we want and, you know, survive. Um, So I had a lot of that. I've had a, it was, I had a very crazy childhood. And so I've had to do a lot of work on just rehabilitating my nervous system so that it can, on, on a very basic level, feel safe Um, so that's like my daily practice and yeah, I just, I've been through many different chapters in my life and I found that I hid through a lot of different places, you know, like I was a escapist extraordinaire for a very long time. I also was very enmeshed in codependent dynamics where I would, I didn't even know who I was. I was my relationship. You know, like I was always hiding behind these other things and I really didn't know who I was for a very, very long time. And so as those pieces started to crumble more and more, and a lot of it had to do with the desert and like the desert's guidance, um, it's like ego death after ego death, you know, it's like none of this shit is real. Like I have been walking around with this false sense of self and I would love to find out what's actually inside. And so everything I do now is just like this pursuit of honesty um, because I was so dishonest for so long. 
consciously and un- and unconsciously. It was just like I lied to myself and I lied to others, and that's not who I am on a soul level. And so it's really c- becoming curious about this the soul essence energy that you were brought into the world with you know and it's like simplifying like it's getting to like the 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 core of this like big like you know like peeling back layers peel 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 what's inside what's actually inside like all of that stuff is like just stuff that you're that you like or you were influenced by or you learned it like what's behind all of that like who are you without the name without the family without the trauma without all of those things that we create these very strong identifications with and so that's my life path at this point like just trying to stay true to that core and it's not going to happen instantaneously like I understand that if I have the privilege to be an old woman, I might still be on that path, you know, because it's fun to be influenced to some extent. It's fun to try on different things. It's fun to like play with personality. Um, But there is a responsibility in there where you're going to really provide to whatever it is, this thing that we're doing here on earth, if you can actually be true to your energetic blueprint if you will and so I'm always on the pursuit of trying to stay in integrity to that original blueprint and I arrive there after being on the complete opposite end of that for a really long time and doing a lot of harm as a result you know so yeah life has humbled me (laughs) again and again and again and now there is no other option but the path of of truth and trying to be as honest as I possibly can with myself and all those around me and the lives that I touch. And also with the, like, even just like with the plants, you know, like when I'm walking around, like in the desert or any landscape, really, like, they're going to call you out on your bullshit. <laughs> Like, you can't lie to a saguaro. Like, <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> you can't lie. So, oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. It's standing. It's interesting. You, you, when you, as you were bringing that up, I felt body tingles, felt the chills. Yeah. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> I think it's something that's permeating our culture. I think it's something that's permeating the collective in this moment. And even with the live that you just posted yesterday or the day before it, it, seeing the responses of so many folks that are just feeling so unsettled in, in their being and in their bodies is so heartbreaking to me. And I too was lying to myself for a very long time. And I am just coming out of a a death cycle myself and, and coming into that truth, that resurgence of knowing is it. It's awakening something new in me. And I felt every word that you just shared on such a deep cellular level. So thank you. Thank you for utilizing your voice for good. Thank you for using your platform to inspire others and also inform others of how to get to a place of peace within themselves. I know that that takes work for the individual, obviously, but you, you're giving them tools. You're giving folks tools. And I think that that's a really beautiful thing to do because you you've gone on the journey and you've taken yourself there so how do you stress stretch past the vicious loop of the mind and become a friend to the inner investigator because essentially that's what that's all about right especially after an ego death Yeah, I mean, it's it's visceral, right? Like you can feel it in every fiber of your being sometimes, like when you're really in it. And I feel like I'm a very um I'm very intimate with that space. Like I'm I'm 
friends with the underworld. I'm very much, I spend a lot of time there, I suppose. <laughs> um, maybe to like an indulgent extent, you know, like a lot of my life, I think I was just indulging and indulging and indulging and not catching myself indulging. Um, but anyway, back to like the inner investigator, just kind of not taking it so seriously has been a huge part of the process for me. And I think like when I was a lot younger and like traditional meditation practices found me, that was the first time where I was able to really witness like the extent of my chaos. It was like, whoa, I can't believe that this is real. <laughs> and so like when you're just like sitting in these like classic meditation postures, for instance, and you're just like watching the tornado happen in your psyche, in your head, um, you need to go past that. You know, it's, it goes like you can't just be watching it forever. Like what are you what are we really doing if we're just like observing our chaos? Um, so for me, it's like, all right, let's get the body involved, you know, like. I'm still experiencing all of these uncomfortable sensations as my mind does this crazy shit that it's used to doing. Like there's like, I talked about like the tension in my chest, you know, like this is a space that I'm constantly having to like offer safety to. I'm constantly having to reopen and reopen and reopen because it has this inclination and this tendency to want to contract and close. And so I think just starting to pay attention to what's happening in your physical vessel is going to be like, like the main clue, you know, of like what you can work with next on a moment to moment basis. It's like, oh, shit, like my right shoulder is flaring up like crazy right now. Let me just start to swim it back a little bit, maybe put on some music, maybe sway, maybe go lay on the ground and move my arm around. Like, again, like just become a child in a way, like, instead of bringing this um, analytical um, like these analytical prescriptions of, oh, I need to do this. And it must have happened when this happened. And I could trace this all the way back to when I was 10 years old, and this trauma occurred, you know, like, we get very brainy about it. And to me, like, that's a very allopathic way of thinking when you're trying to find the you know, like looking at your, your body, like, it, like a car, like looking at it as if it's parts of a car, like, that's not how it works, you know, like we're holistic entities. And so if it's happening in one area, like that, that's just speaking to an entire energetic flow that is needing restoration. Um, anyway, kind of lost my train of thought there. <laughs> I'm just going on all kinds of tangents. But <sighs> So instead of like going down the path of thinking allopathically of like, oh, I need to figure out what the source of this pain is or what the source of this emotion is or what the source of this negativity, as if it's a problem, um, kind of making the, the switch to it being an intelligent entity that has information for you. And I think that has been groundbreaking for me. And that has origins in the work of unshaming. And so we shame our thoughts, we shame our emotions, we shame like physical symptoms that we have, like, oh, I wish this pain would go away, this pain sucks, this pain, like, my life will be so much better when this pain goes away. It's like, hold up, hold up, like, is that really true? Because if it's happening, if it's circulating within you, there is information in there for you. There is like an opportunity that is embedded inside of that code. And so if we can just kind of make the paradigm shift of just trying to like shoo it away and bat it off and call it names and just like long for the opposite <laughs> feeling, um, we're we're only getting a fraction of our experience, you know, like only a fraction of like the potential experience becomes present. And so when you catch yourself spiraling out and the mind is fixating on a certain area or there's a persistent emotion or theme coming up, I say lean into it, take it out on a date, you know, like take it out to the landscape and see what it has to say. And it might not say anything for a good while because 
if uh, like chances are, if you are feeling that way, you've broken trust with yourself many times. And so you're going to have to like rehabilitate that trust. And that takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of time and maybe some resource. I have no idea. Like everyone's karma is different, (laughs) but I do know that like we like that shattering of trust with ourselves, um, it has implications and we need to devote some time to rehabilitating that and restoring that. And once the body, the animal body is like, okay, she's serious. Like we can like work together now. You'll start to like be able to like more effectively peel back the layers in a way that doesn't like freak out your nervous system. You know, like there, like there's an open channel for communication now. And so I think like slowness is really, really important for that. You know, like I think we need to watch ourselves and like know when to press the brakes and know when we can accelerate just a little bit more and just proceed with caution and not like in a paranoid way, but in a, in a loving way. Mm. So good. Like a dance. It is a dance. It's exactly what it is. It's a full dance. And so sometimes the dance is going to get a little choppy and uncomfortable and awkward, Mm -hmm. but keep on moving with it. That's the only way you just have to like learn to dance with each other and move with each other and be committed to each other, even when it doesn't necessarily feel good. Yeah. It's, I really admire you acknowledging the fact that you have a tendency to go to the depth. And it's, it's so interesting to me because I too have that same tendency Mm -hmm. and we found each other. (laughs) We, we did a thousand percent. It's, you know, the pain pleasure threshold is there's a fine line. It's, you know, you can dance in between that space and it feels good sometimes to lean into the dark spaces of our psyche and investigate. Existential king, bro. Existential king. Like we like it. Exactly. We we like it. (laughs) Yes. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. I've been wanting to read that book. Have you read that? Yeah. I'm dying to read it. I love her work though. We're talking I, I about love it. Her, what's her name? Carolyn something. Um I thought it was Jamie Lee. No, it's not. It's it's Carolyn. I don't know the last name, but I'll have to add that in the show notes or something yeah. just for other folks to have. Let's all book club it. Let's book club it. That would be amazing. I think uh, just listening to her explain that idea of how we go to the depths to get that pleasure aspect activated. And then to hear you say that, it's just, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Oh, yeah. You're definitely, I think deep down, every single one of us has it to some extent. For sure. It's the human. It's it's what we came here to experience, right? Where we get to play in those realms of figuring out what feels good and what doesn't. And even when it doesn't and it still does, it's, you know. Yeah, sometimes you just want to press on the bruise a little bit. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, you know, and I think it's interesting culturally. I, I'm curious if you think that that has any ties to potentially the way that you were raised and the aspect. I know that culturally for me, there's this uh, thing that I was introduced to at a very young age with my family where it was all about the drama. And that was something that had to be just deconstructed. But now we get to do it in a different way, holistically for ourselves. So I'm curious, has that been a part of that aspect for you going into your depths? Oh, yeah. I mean, my fam, like the way I was raised and the environment that I was raised in was completely psychotic on so many levels. And I know I have a smile on my face right now and I've done a lot of work with this. So I feel like very able to hold this posture when I speak to it, but it was crazy. And it was a home of a lot of domestic violence, of emotional manipulation Um, from a very, very young age. I feel like I stepped into the mother role, you know? And so just, yeah, it was just a very unstable environment that I grew up in. And with very low 
emotional intelligence, I suppose. And yeah, just like arrested development, like adults who don't walk themselves through the path of maturity and just kind of get stunted in one area. And so I witnessed that my whole life. And once I was out of that home and on my own, I started like repeating a lot of the stuff that I saw and until I couldn't anymore until like my physical health literally stopped me in the tra- in, on my tracks and I had to like second guess everything. But yeah, my home and like my parents and my family and like all of the drama that comes along with like, I don't know, just being a Mexican American <laughs> from the borderlands, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, cultural and Im- like, Im- like very deeply embedded things in that, <laughs> whatever you want to call that. Um, but yeah, family is complicated and I've had to really step into my own, you know, and recognize that I am next in line and one day I get to be the elder and I'm going to leave behind a different trace. And that is all I can really do at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm. But yes, to answer your question, a thousand percent, my family, my lineage, my, the karma that I was born with, the, the one thing I've been thinking a lot about lately has been, um, intergenerational curses because like me and my mom have been talking a lot this week because there is like a really crazy situation happening right now amongst the family and I was asking my mom like I was just trying I was being the investigator (laughs) you know like hey like how long has this been going on you know like I noticed this trend happening and we traced it back four generations And I was like, holy shit, you guys, like, how much longer do we want to keep on playing this game? And so it's, you know, it's my turn and I'm not going to play that game anymore. And we have to be very aware of like, just like what our bloodline carries and we're not, it's not benign, you know, like we're not immune to that. And it doesn't mean that you need to get wrapped up in the drama of it all but we need to pay attention to where we are contributing to that paradigm and have the finesse to be able to stretch and wiggle around it so that we can leave a a different legacy because it doesn't have to be that way. Like we are the next elders and we should be freaking trying our damnedest to leave a better world behind. (laughs) A thousand percent. I couldn't agree more. I, I too have been in the process of being the first to do the work and fuck it's a lot of work to be the first to do the work yeah it sucks (laughs) in many ways exhausting (laughs) it's so exhausting and then you know even you mentioning many deaths have been a part of this becoming a part of your metamorphosis and that is just a part of this journey when you say yes to being the elder that decided to make the change for the next generation and the next generation. Yeah. And especially as women, I mean, I think like women are just the most magical creatures on earth. And Mm. I wasn't really raised to believe that. Um. But I, I really believe that a woman sets the tone for the home, you know, and obviously maybe my childhood has influenced some of that. But when a woman feels nourished and when a woman feels like embodied and like resourced to get what she needs and allocate what she needs and stuff, like the home is usually a lot healthier. And when a home is healthier, that pours over into your neighbors, into your community, into your friendships, you know? And so I think it's so important that women really start paying attention to where they are getting stunted in their own lack of maturity, you know, for lack of a better word. Um, And so that has also been a huge part of me witnessing, um, like, just 
accepting the necessary deaths, you know, like me noticing where I'm, I was stunted in this, in maidenhood, essentially, I don't really have a better word. If you have a better word for maidenhood, I am all ears. But the way I see maidenhood is like, you know, like the young, a young woman, a young essence, a young energy. She's getting to know herself still. She's learning about the world. She's figuring out what she wants, but we can't be stuck in that forever. Like there's not going to be any stability in a home if it's being run by a forever maiden, which is something that I witnessed growing up, you know, and this isn't done consciously, but it's like, what is your emotional capacity? Is it stuck in that like wounded maiden stuff? Or does it have the the robustness and the capacity to be able to have a hard conversation without World War Three breaking out? You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, very much so. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, you know, family and whatnot. I, my mom and dad and I have had many conversations about this specifically, and they're aware. They're aware the traits that they brought in the home. They're aware that, and, and to a certain degree, we, we know that if they weren't given the tools or, and we know now also there's so many more resources than there were then. And so it's, I'm grateful that we get to carry the torch, that we get to be the bearers of this beautiful opportunity to set forth a new path. However, it doesn't make it easy. And I would love for you to extend a little bit more conversation around the idea of the wounded maiden, because you had a post not too long ago. And it was very profound. So if you could just share a little bit more information about what it looks like to move from the wounded maiden into the embodied feminine essence that wears strength and courage. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Um, Like everything, I can only speak to something through my own personal experiences, you know. And so I, in my own personal experience, I was noticing where these patterns were emerging in my personal life, in my intimate relationships with my partner, for instance. And it's like, you see the flare ups happen again and again. And eventually I had to look at, again, like coming back to the core, like what's really happening? How can I get down to like the brutal honesty of what's happening. It's like, okay, I'm behaving in a way that is fully emotionally stunted. I'm being a kind of a victim, you know, like I'm wanting like for something to come save me or I'm wanting like these circumstances to be all lined up for, for me to show up in a certain way. And all of that is just so ungrounded to me. And it just, it dawned, it dawned on me at one point where it was like, okay, if I want to have the relationship that I know that I am capable of having, I need to step into a more solid, mature, feminine energy. Because me being like all over the place and being triggered and then closing my heart or like holding back and you know, like giving silent treatment, stuff like that, like all of that is fuckery. (laughs) And it is not contributing to the health of yourself, to your partner, to your home, to anyone, like everyone loses everyone. And so I just really had to get like brutally honest with myself about where I was contributing to these patterns. And a lot of it was just like how I was showing up as a woman, um, in my mind, in my heart, in my capacity to feel, in my capacity to um, even take care of my body in a more profound way. Um, And like, for instance, like pleasure, like your pleasure is not your partner's responsibility. You know what I mean? It's no one's responsibility, but but your, your own. And so just noticing where you are kind of handing over the responsibility 
is has been a big part of me walking myself on that path from like wounded maiden um the world owes me or like what can i get out of this situation to entering a a space where it's like okay what can i offer this situation how can i show up how can i embody myself in a way that is going to be able to hold all of this in a more healthy way and so yeah, it's obviously a very nuanced and complex subject with many layers to it, but really start paying attention to where the tangles are happening. Like what what are the patterns that you are noticing flare up? And it's really taking 100% responsibility and like noticing and like, you know, taking into account your part in that and noticing where there could be maybe a little bit more emotional and um, just emotional robustness. It's like, okay, where am I being stubborn right now? Where am I unwilling to move? Where am I unwilling to stretch? And how can I train my body to be able to feel safe enough to maybe go 5% deeper without contracting? And so I think like this idea of doing it gradually is really important. Like that's a huge thing for me because um, burnout is very real. And when you burn out your nervous system from going from extremes, like, oh, I'm a wounded maiden. Now I'm a mature feminine. Like, no, that's not your, your body literally doesn't know how to do that. Like, you need to like gradually, like baby step your way to these different levels <laughs> along the path. Um, but yeah, that's been a lot of my journey, just witnessing, observing, getting brutally honest and stretching what is possible within those spaces. Um, and I think relationships, especially your intimate relationships, are going to be a, a, a very potent mirror, you know, like, because what you do in your intimate relationships, you don't do anywhere else. <laughs> totally. Totally. No, it's it's interesting. I I've noticed that in my own, I'm, I'm married, I've been married for almost eight years. And it's interesting because I've went through my spiritual awakening and I've gone through, gone through many deaths in the process of those eight years, but there's been so much work that's been done since I moved to Portland, but even a couple years prior to that. So for the past four years, so my husband and I had to meet each other for the first time. It was like this, introduction of two new humans and it was rough in the beginning and that wounded maiden especially in the beginning of trying to find those sea legs was that was brutal i don't know who this person is that i'm trying to to, to embody i feel her wanting to to call me close you know the the embodied feminine essence that was calling me forth i i still didn't know how to do it so it felt like i was like a calf with <laughs> the shaky legs, <laughs> the shaky legs. Exactly. And there's no better opportunity than an int than an intimate relationship to show you that. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I, I fully agree. And like, especially like in long-term partnerships, like mm -hmm. yours and mine and stuff, like they are going to be some rough patches because mm -hmm we are also going on our own personal paths and we become different people. And it's like, there's a constant re-meeting and it like, it's like the dance we were talking about earlier. It's the same thing in our partnerships. Um, but what's beautiful is like, if you are with a partner who is like a hundred percent down to meet you there and is a hundred percent down to do that awkward dance with you, like, like you're golden, you know, like that is an intimacy that, you know, one of a kind, one of a kind. There's nothing. I mean, that's the sacred union that allows us to, I, I think it's obviously most important for us to feel that safety within ourselves first. But when we get to feel that support from our beloved Mm. It's juicy. <laughs> it's profound. It is juicy. Yeah. Yeah. So what, I mean, I, I don't want you to share what, what doesn't feel comfortable for you sharing, but 
I'm curious your partnership and and what that has done for your spiritual work for your and for you embodying this this woman that mm-hmm. you are today. I know that you've shared that you know it's been an opportunity to see new parts of yourself, but I would love for you to just share a little bit more about that and get into the to the juice into that nectar, the honey. Yeah, I would love to share about that. Um, So I've been with my partner for about five years now, and I feel like a totally different woman from five years ago. I mean, naturally, right? But I've had to really grow up as an individual, as a woman, um, in order to be in this relationship. Um, I'm... I'm so like constantly amazed at my partner's ability to just show up with presence in his heart. And that has been like a really potent mirror for me because when I met him, I did not have that. I did not know how to do that. It almost scared me, you know, to be in that kind of presence. Um, And also like me having, again, like the wounded maiden stuff of like almost trying to like fight back against it. You know, like trying to be um, what's like a misbehaving teenager, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, oh, I'm going to go this way now or I'm going to go that way. And, you know, just like creating friction. And so I've had to really learn how to stretch my own nervous system's capacity to even receive that Mm. kind of love and to even, you know, like be hugged for like longer than I used to be comfortable with. Like, it's so interesting. Um, I was in a really long-term relationship in my past life, I call, like in my 20s. Um, And that one was just like pure chaos, you know? And like, I learned so much through that. And (sighs) there was just no sense of, like I was hiding the whole time. And so once I like let go of that chapter of my life, it was like, okay, you have an opportunity to create a whole other environment for yourself. And so when you really start living more from like the perception of what your heart has in store for you, um, it's just everything becomes a lot more real. And so this relationship is just like, it's brought me all the realness. It's made me face all of like, my ego stuff. And I, yeah, it's just like the ego is so hilarious. (laughs) I was clinging onto it for dear life for so long for the first many years of this relationship, probably. And it's just, this relationship is asking me to step up and into becoming uh, the mature woman, you know, that I know I have the capacity to be at this stage in life. And we together, we are building dreams that I'm, I don't know. I never even knew that these dreams were really going to happen. Like last year we bought a 50 acre off grid ranch out in the desert. And right now we're preparing the space for us to move out there and we're going to raise animals and we're going to build earth structures. And like, I can't even imagine a better human being that I could do Mm. this project with, you know? And so like my heart is just constantly being cracked open and cracked open and cracked open to just the potential that life has has like in store for you and that like dreams really can like manifest if you are in proximity to you know like people who want to go in that direction with you i think there's like this natural like you know swirl to life like there's this direction that we have and sometimes we can like choose partners that have like an opposite direction and so you're never really like building life together but when you find someone who wants to move with you in that similar way like this whole other world opens up and so i am ecstatic about my partnership and he's just constantly like asking of me to open up even more, you know? And so it's like a little challenge and I'm so here for it. Like I need this challenge because if it wasn't for someone that I love and who I trust asking me to step up in this way without even telling me, you know, like he's not verbally saying like, Oh, you need to step up. But it's like, if I want to have this life, if I want to like be able to hold the life that is like actually starting to unfurl, I know what kind of woman I need to be. I know like what is going like, yeah, I know how I need to show up in order to be able to hold the the great weight of that life because 
at the end of the day, I want that life, you know, like I choose this life and there's no rules. Like we get to paint it. And so if I want to keep on painting and having fun with this life, then you need to keep on checking in with like, okay, what qualities are really serving me right now? And what qualities can afford to maybe be let go of or adjusted or reoriented in some capacity so that they can hold more love and so that they can hold more um, resilience to do hard things like move out to the middle of nowhere (laughs) with, you know, and build from nothing. So it's going to be cool. (laughs) I'm so excited for you. I would love for you to just share a little bit about you stewarding this land. I see your incredible animals, your ducks and your chickens and your friendly little visitations that you have from the cats, the local kitties and all of it. I know we have like, we have a really sweet house here where we live in Tucson, Arizona, and we've created a really fun, like little ecosystem here. And yeah, we have our geese running around being crazy. And there's just all these neighborhood cats that come rolling in with all their petty dramas. And (laughs) yeah, (laughs) yeah, we have a lot of fun little creatures and I can't wait to have more animals out there. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know when that happened that I wanted to have all these animals, but it's only getting started, my dude. It's only getting started. The sheep uh, are on their way. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. So much fun too. Uh, so I mean, sheep's milk. Like- exactly. I mean, that's part of our fantasy, you know. Like we want to be able to be um, self-sufficient to some extent. Like we want to raise our own food out there, and we want to just be more engaged with everything that we actually use and. Um, Yeah. So that being said, like everything that we're going to be doing out there at the ranch is going to be fully in consideration to the landscape. And we're going to be moving at a pace that allows the landscape to also inform us of what Mm. it wants and what it needs. Mm. And the space, it it used to be like a cattle um, ranch for maybe like 60 years, 70 years from like this old like Mexican family. And so we're kind of like inheriting (laughs) this like legacy, it feels like. And yeah, I don't exactly know what it's going to become because I feel like I need to, we both feel like we need to live out there for a while to really even understand who she is. Mm. But it's at a different elevation. So there's a few different plants out there that I don't really have many relationships with at this point. Mm. So I'm very excited to get to know these new friends. And yeah, we're going to build so many cool structures. My partner is an amazing builder. He's like, he could, yeah, he's like a builder, an inventor, like a madman. Like he's like the perfect person for this crazy job. Excuse me. But um, yeah, so we're going to be building different things. We have visions of creating guest houses for people to come out there and have this experience um, because it's off grid. Like the second you get out there, like your nervous system actually like drops in and it feels so good. And I want people to experience that for themselves, you know, so I can't wait to take like the work that I do with people um, out there, you know, like I love online stuff you know but it's the in-person you know like sensate proximity that really lights me up and so having the opportunity to create a space for people to gather and for community to come together in a place where you're not just being like electrically Mm -hmm. fried all the time by like all this stuff um excites me deeply and so that's kind of our intention with the space out there it's so inspiring. That's that's my husband and my vision. We moved really? to yeah, we moved to Portland to figure out where we wanted to have land. We have a vision of owning land and creating it to just be a place where people can come and rest oh. and whatever else that means, you know. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's I would love to have you both visit whenever we have our guest houses going. I would going. love that. Yeah, it'd be come. such an honor. 
And that's the, that's part of the vision too, you know, like creating a network of people like, okay, you have your spot over there. We have our spot over here. When the weather's crappy over there, come down here. Like mm-hmm. we, there's like no rules, you guys, like we get to like create life as we want it. And so if we can like, just kind of like collaborate to some extent, like, cause it can't just be a one person thing. Like it's impossible. It's, it will take like literally a lifetime. You build it and then you die and you don't even get to enjoy it. <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. We're going to have to Ex- get clever and that's part of the intent. So mm. come visit everyone. <laughs> yes. The collaborations, it's collaborations, community, and the creativity that interweaves us all. It's the most incredible gift that we get to just watch happen before us. It's, it's so incredible. And, and the internet is an incredible place to watch that happen. However, there's nothing like being in physical space with someone to be able to put your hands on someone's body to feel that somatic aspect. And, you know, I know you do so much somatic work. And I know we didn't really get the opportunity to talk too much about that. But I would love for you to leave us off with just some advice, some wisdom, and I know that it's all from the inner workings of your own experience, but with your experience, what has been so ever present and helpful for you that you would love to impart to others? Mm. All right. Let me feel into it for a moment. Yeah, of course. Honestly, the most simple thing that anyone can do today is to go outside even if the sun's not out you're still gonna get those good rays coming through the clouds find somewhere where you can lay down and just start breathing into your belly like pretend your belly is a balloon and you're just inflating the balloon and you're deflating the balloon and just inflate the balloon and deflate the balloon and with every inhalation and exhalation just imagine that the earth is kind of tugging you down just a little bit and I think like just inviting simplicity back into our lives and relinquishing the overcomplication of what healing can be has been huge. I got very enmeshed in a lot of technical, you know, like all the bells and whistles kinds of healing for a while. And I think like I've the past like year and a half, two years, I've really been like just coming out of that haze and realizing that, oh, okay, it doesn't, it can be really, really simple. And everything I need is already around me. And yeah, that's it. Just work with the ground, like whatever ground is available to you right now. If you're in a city, go to a park. (laughs) If you have a car, get in your car and like drive in whatever direction where there are like no electric wires (laughs) present (laughs) and just start connecting with yourself in those environments that are going to remind you of who you are outside of the conditioned paradigms that we expose ourselves to and are exposed to. Um, Yeah. That's what Mm. I would say. Earth, breath, simplicity. So good. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for that transmission. Thank you for your voice, for your wisdoms and for being a steward to whatever spirit has to teach you, because I know that you're just an open vessel and a conduit for, whatever wants to come through. So thank you for being open and mm-hmm. for doing the work to stay open, because I know that you too have that tendency yeah. to close in on the heart. So You're just that's with the body. It. Yeah. It's yeah. a process. It's a it's process. An honor. It's an honor. You guys like mm-hmm. we have the opportunity to unravel and unpack and explore and just like bring back that playfulness, you know? So, so good. Yeah. Thank you for having me Danae. It was a pleasure yeah. speaking to you. And Definitely. I look forward to the next time we cross paths when you come visit me in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, I definitely will do that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Mm, thank you. Mm. Bye-bye, Angel. Bye, sweet one. To learn more about Melissa and her offerings, you can find her on Instagram at Melissa Aparicio or on her website at 
www.melissaaparicio.com. Hey there, it's Danae again. Just wanted to say thank you for sharing your time and energy with me. If this podcast resonates, please like, subscribe, follow, and share if you're willing. Reviews help too, so if you're feeling the vibe, please leave a review where you can. Sending all the love. Peace.